Hi and welcome to all the racing fans and enthusiasts around the globe who will be joining us for this pre-recorded show. We are recording early doors on Monday morning for the Tuesday meeting on the 16th of April. Fairview Poly Track is where we will be racing and lovely to have Grant Paddock on the line, the resident expert who always points us in the right direction. Firstly Grant, how are you doing and then secondly, what do you think of the card? Morning Sheldon, morning Panthers, yeah all good this side, um, doing fine, uh, the card on the other hand, uh, not bad, a little bit of money which we made, two very difficult fields in race 6 and 8, but uh, hopefully the rest of the meeting we can go nice and short and and then we can go fields in those two races, but yeah, not a bad card at all, I think there's definitely money to be made Sheldon and let's get cracking straight away with uh, race 1. Right, let's get the batsman on the field and the opening batsman will be in race number one with number seven, Fire Alarm at 14 to 10 and number four, Golden Link at 28 to 10. So they'll be the opening salvo as the favourite and second favourite. And just having a look, there is an early scratching. Number three, First Lord takes no pot. A field of seven runners in the first down over 1,200 metres on the poly track grant. And I see for your bar pot, that is your suggested bet. And you're going with numbers four and eight, the tried and tested horses. But the favourite is number seven, Fire Alarm. So let's start there. Is there any word on the ground about number seven, Fire Alarm? Richard Furry for Alan Kreef. Um, Sheldon, no word on the ground, which is strange. You know, Richard jumped off, can't say no, ran a very good race last time out to jump on fire alarm. So there's obviously some ability there. No money for it. Opened up even money, gone 14 to 10. And there's, there's no talk on the ground for it, which is strange enough. But uh, I'm, I'm actually very strong on this horse, Golden Link. He's come out, he's, he, he ran a very good race um, last time out. He ran third, to, which is definitely the strongest form line, juvenile form line in Port Elizabeth. There's no doubt that Golden Rule form line. I think the fourth horse and the second can also both come out to win. Um, Golden Link, very, very strong for me in this race. Uh, Magical River, Samanga uh, ran on very nicely over a thousand last time out. Samanga got off set, slap a set of blinkers on and put her over 12 and she'll be a big runner. She worked extremely well in her final workout, so she's definitely going to be there and thereabouts. Then we've got Can't Say No, Fire Alarm, and then maybe the source Nike's Ray of Light can also improve to run to run in the back end of Cortez, but um, I'm quite strong on the four-year Golden Link, uh, Sheldon. Right, now let's just give a comment, looking at the front comment there for number seven, Fire Alarm. Obviously, you got to be the judge when it comes to the comments. Watch them go down to the start. But the comment here reads, will run well if not too green. So as you heard from Grant, from Even Money at 14 to 10, keep an eye on number seven, Fire Alarm. However, number four, Golden Link, that's the one that they believe they all have to beat. Let's move into the territory of race number two, which is over 1,600 metres, dual for 13.25. And in race number two, number five, Master of Defence, and number seven, Outer Dimension, are both quoted at three to one. Number three, Spec Magic, seven to two. And then just having a look, scratched is number eight, Equilibrium. So scratch number eight, Equilibrium. So having a look at number four, Williams Legacy, five to one. 4 to 1, 7 to 2. Let's kick off with number 4, Williams Legacy. This is from the Kelly Mitchley stable, and you'll be able to guide us in the right direction. Yeah, 100% Sheldon, professional maiden, there's no doubt. Um, he'll win a race eventually. He's a solid PA horse. He always he doesn't know how to run a bad race. He's pretty much in the same category as Master of Defence. Um, Spec Magic, on the other hand, very good first run year. Um, hung, hung in a little bit on its first on his first run year. They've changed the they've changed the bit and they've got him running in a straight line. Uh, back on the poly, ran a very good second in KZN over a mile on poly. I think he's definitely going to be the horse to beat. Um, he's having his second run here but he didn't have a much of a break so um he's probably my first pick from williams legacy this horse outer dimension i see his favorite i do think she will win her first start where she goes over the the grass mile to 1800 uh, i think this poly uh, mile will be a little bit on the sharp side so she will be making uh, doing her best work late and she can definitely run into the quartets and trifectas i have gone three four five and seven here and if i buy pot just the three and the four then we move on to race number three, which will be the opening leg of the pick six. So for all the pick six players out there, 14.05. That'll be the time that the 
Bets will have to be on and the race will be jumping. So by 14.05, if you don't have your bets on and there's no delays, you will be left standing cold. 1900 meters the trip and just having a look at the early exchanges with regards to the scratchings number one storm boulevard is out number four crystal maiden is 11 to 10. number five is at nine to two number 11 sundrop six to one and then it's seven to one and better the rest now Grant, when it comes to race number three, it's an open maiden. And when it comes to the open maidens, it just throws a spanner in the works. It does, it does. But um, unfortunately, our bottom weights aren't too clever in this race, to be very honest with you. Sandra ran on, ran on um, Friday, ran a decent race. So we've got to watch if that takes its pl uh, place with um, 52 on its back. Uh, but jumping from um, 14 and 13 all the way up to 1900, uh, that I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do, to be very honest with you, three days later. But um, this Philly Crystal Maiden is definitely the horse to beat. She's got a, a 73 rating. She's only carrying 57 and a half with the scratching of Storm Boulevard, who was at the top of the weights. Um, she was beaten by a very, very good horse from the Mitchell Yard Essential first time out. And I know Alan fancied her quite strongly. The first run on the poly, I don't think it's a problem. Alan would have had her on there, definitely. Um, I'm actually quite strong in the camp of Crystal Maiden. I've got a, a lovely value bet here for the punters in the form of number six. He's a goal. He's come on the right way. His work has really improved big time. He'll enjoy the 1900. And this time, he's got a much better draw. Nice low weight to carry 54 on his back with um, uh, Kirsten riding it. Um, the pick six, you only need, you need two horses, four and six. Um, if you want to go wider, a horse like Imhotep, uh, I believe that's going to be going out to front. And so to Bella's first waivers, comes in with a nice galloping weight back into an open handicap. So, uh, yeah, Crystal Maiden, hard to beat, but the danger, yeah, he's a goal, Sheldon. Well, at around 12 and 14 to 1, when Grant talks, we sit back and we take note. At number 6, he's a goal, 12 and 14 to 1. And just on the note of this individual, Grant, the Vercingetorixes, let's get that right, they're absolutely setting the tracks alight. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. You can't. They can't do much wrong. Eh? That's for sure. They're a very, very good sire and um, probably the best in the country by a long way. Right. Let's move on to the next heat and just looking at the current betting for race number four. They have number four, Lady Writer, trading at around thirty-three to ten. This is for the Kelly Mitchley stable, so you'll be able to give us some inside information with Samanga Kamala board. Number seven on the guest list is at 33 to 10, and then we go out six to one and better the rest. Let's start with number four, Lady Writer. She's had the 18 runs for a victory, two seconds. She's yet to win on the poly, but she's very consistent, and I suppose it's just a matter of when she's going to get that next win and on the poly. Yeah, 100%. There's no, there's no problems with the poly or, or any surface with her. She's very, very honest. Got a draw. It's about getting the timing right. She's got quite a short run in. She'll give you a little, probably a 100-yard kick, and then she'll go one pace on you. So Samunga's got to get it right last time. I think he went a touch early, and he got collared late. Um, I know Alan fancies a little bit of this on the guest list, drawn out at 12. <laughs> it's going to have a lot of work to do. You either got to commit from draw 12, or you got to drop in and sit behind some moderate horses. Number 11, Lady Zoltanite won a very good race here first time out, albeit at 50 to 1, shows nothing at track. But since the since the wins improved leaps and bounds, I actually think they prefer Lady Zoltanite to, to Lady Writer. But uh, I think it lays with the Mitchley Yard here and the Creer Force for cover. So it's going to be um, 4 7 in 11 and uh, maybe a little bit of get it done to finish up in the quartet positions. But um, nice Phillies race, and I think Lady Zoltanite could be the right horse. Well, there you go. Keep a close eye on those individuals in race number four as we step into race number five. And race number five, they have number one grazing in the grass, trading at 12 to 10. Richard Faree for Alan Griff, devastating combination. Number five, Brendan James, 11 to 2. And number two, Runaway Song is at 6 to 1. Now, just looking at your best bet, I believe, on the card, number one, grazing in the grass, the best weighted runner in this race. And despite that nine draw, you got Richard Ferry in the irons for Alan Griff, second to Cherry a new last time out. And this is a horse who's already notched up 13 wins. 
Yeah, 100% Sheldon. I think it'll be number 14 on on, on tomorrow. There's no doubt. Uh, perfect preparation. He's had two runs, one over 18, uh, a very good last run over a mile, which is definitely short of his back. Back on the poly, 1900. <laughs> very, very hard horse to beat. Very, very hard horse at the weights to beat and on, on, on the foreman he's had a perfect prep. Alan has done this 100%. There's no doubt. Best bets on the card, banker in all bets. Um, covering, you can go Brendan James, um, Global Alley Runaway Song, but uh, I think they're all racing for minor uh, st stakes. Right, now let's move on to race number six. And when I see your quartet of numbers in the final leg of the bar pot, that tells the tale. So you've gone with numbers one, three, five, and nine over the 1400 meter trip. So this is a leg that you, you're not confident in. No, nah, Sheldon, this is a very, very difficult race. I would have loved to see Brendan James run in this 1400 because uh, he would have been an absolute penalty kick, but uh, it's not that way. So we, now we've got to scratch around the pick six. I've gone field. It's that kind of a race. You can make a case for every single one of these horses. Slings and Arrows has got the form, but it's all been on grass. You've got Inherit the Rain with Kumala, and he's, he, he's going the 1400 again on the poly. He's got to be a runner, there's no doubt. Um, whatever next, Richard trying him over 1400. He hasn't shown anything over 14, but they're giving it another go from a half decent draw. And then um, my other horse, Safe Return, ran a very good last run, but that's all been grass form. So it's, it's very, very wide open. Um, as I said, uh, one, three, five, and nine in no particular order. But this is a field race in the pick six, no doubt. Um, horses like Green Light to Heaven and Night Course can even pop up. But a uh, very, very difficult race, Sheldon. The punters need to go as wide as possible. Right, let's move on to race number seven and just taking a look at the favourite. And once again, you don't have to be a genius to see who's going to be at the top of the boards. Richard Faree, Alan Creer for number three, Concerto for the Hollywood Syndicate, Anthony Del Pesh, Owen and Devin and Heifer and the entire team. And this is currently trading at 16 to 10. Number two, Raising Quinn is 7 to 2. Number four, Dreamscape is 9 to 2. And then let's just have a look at my value selection. I think number six, Midnight Crystal, a horse who needs to be included at around 16 to 1. Last time, a little bit of signs of life with the four kgs off the back. Tell us firstly about number three, Concerto. Pushed up five points for the latest victory. Do you believe the daughter of Canford Cliffs is still ahead of the handicapper off a 77? Against this lot, yes, yeah, Sheldon, uh, and she's actually a better horse on the poly, to be honest with you. Um, even though she won on the grass last time out, I, did, I actually brossed her last time, being because it went to grass, and she won a very, very good race. Raising Quinn's her biggest danger, but she'd probably prefer um, a mile, uh, seven draw. They, they drawn six and seven, you know, the three quarter way out. Princess Azaria, probably looking for the mile. But uh, showing some very decent work back home. And you've got the likes of Angel Sea, Midnight Crystal. Unfortunately, Dreamscape was lumbered by the handicapper. And from a 10 draw, it's going to have it all to do to go back to back. But um, I actually think it's a boat race between the three and the two-year Sheldon. And my pick six, I've only gone those two horses. So that's a look at race number seven. So race number seven, number three, Concerto sets the trend. And let's see if Richard Furry and Alan Kreev can add another to their tally. Moving along to the eighth and final race, due off at 16.55. On this occasion, 1,400 metres will be the trip. And Grant, when you look at race number eight at this point in time, it looks to be one of those races where you could play a nice quartet or get a nice exactor. The floor is yours. Guide us in the right direction as far as race number eight goes, please. Yeah, once again, the most difficult race on the card. It's a, it's a field in the pick six. There's no doubt. The place accumulates. You're going to need a couple of horses. I have gone for American Dream. He's shown two very, very gutsy wins from right up there. Course and distance. Yeni up. Um, no problem with that. If he's all if he's fitting well, which I'm sure he should be. He's been racing fairly recently. And um, he's probably the horse to beat. Coastal Path, definitely a horse over the 1,400. Um, I know they've been waiting and waiting for a draw. Unfortunately, they ran out of patience. And they, they're running from 11 draw over 1400 is going to be very very difficult because they're jumping on the camber but you know Richard will probably drop him out and he'll come with a, with a late run the source euphoric ran a very good race on Friday 
They're backing him up once again very, very soon, over 1,400. But he showed a lot of pace on, on Friday and, and ran a very, very decent race. And then the likes of Life on Mars, who's definitely better over 1,200 on the poly, now going an extra furlong. The kid, Matt Trent Mayu, who takes the four off, so, and he's an honest horse. He doesn't know how to run a bad race. But um, once again, they need to go wide. I've got 9, 10, 1, and 5, but um, pick 6, you're going to need the lot. Well, Grant, thank you very much for your input. But before we let you go, we're going to bring up your suggested bet for the meeting on Tuesday, the 16th of April. And for your Legion of fans, for your Legion of fans who follow you meeting in and out, if you can go through those bets for them, please. 100% Sheldon, thank you. Best bet, race five, number one, grazing in the grass. And my value bet, race three, number six, he's a goal. My suggested bet, which is the bipod, goes as follows. We open up with four and eight by three and four, by four and six, by four, seven, eleven, by banker one, by one, three, five and nine for 72 rand. Thanks very much, Grant, as is the norm. An absolute pleasure doing business with you, as they say. And now it's down to the horses to do it on the track. So thank you very much for all the input and hopefully you have a wonderful day and the horses run as well accordingly. Thank you very much, Sheldon, and good luck to the punters tomorrow. Goodbye. Thanks very much to Grant Paddock, the resident expert as far as the Fairview place goes. So let's keep a close eye on all his selections and often he's bang on the money and he's on the ground. He knows exactly what's happening there. So for you, the punter, the viewer, best of luck and hopefully your horse runs as fast as they can.